name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. So we gather to the first of, of these, what I call the random feasts, this season of the, extends over the next five weeks, these Sundays that kind of invite us into reflecting on the life of our church, the, the, what our mission is on this Ascension Day. How do we engage with the world? How do we long for the Holy Spirit next week? How do we celebrate the, the life of the Trinity? How are we fed and nourished by the Lord and His body and blood? These examples of, of life and goodness as we open ourselves now to all that God has prepared for us. And let's bring ourselves, let's bring our doubts, let's bring our concerns Let's bring our needs as we acknowledge the wonder and the glory of God. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who believe that your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, ascended this day to the heavens, may in spirit dwell already in heavenly realms, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In my earlier work, Theophilus, I dealt with everything Jesus had done and taught from the beginning until the day he gave his instructions to the apostles he had chosen through the Holy Spirit and was taken up to heaven.
He had shown himself alive to them after his passion by many demonstrations. For 40 days, he had continued to appear to them and tell them about the kingdom of God. When he had been at table with them, he had told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for what the Father had promised. It is, he said, what you have heard me speaking about. John baptized you with water, but you, not many days from now, will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now having met together, they asked him, Lord, has the time come? Are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know times or dates that the Father has decided by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And then you will be my witnesses, not only in Jerusalem, but throughout Judea and Samaria, and indeed to the ends of the earth. As he said this, he was lifted up while they looked on and a cloud took him from their sight. They were still staring into the sky when suddenly two men in white were standing near them and they said, why are you men from Galilee standing here looking into the sky? Jesus, who had been taken up from you to, into heaven, this same Jesus will come back in the same way as you had seen him go there. The word of the Lord. Peoples, clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, we must fear, great King over all the earth. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God is King of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God is King over the nations. God reigns on his holy throne. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, <clears throat> give you a spirit of wisdom and perception of what is revealed to bring you to full knowledge of him. May he enlighten the eyes of your mind so that you can see what hope his call holds for you, what rich glories he has promised the saints will inherit, and how infinitely great is the power that he has exercised for us believers. This you can tell from the strength from the dead and to make him sit at his right hand in heaven. For above every sovereignty, authority, power, or domination, or any other name that can be named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. He has put all the things under his feet and made him as the ruler of everything, the head of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills the whole creation. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples set out for Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all the commands I gave you, and know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. The Gospel of the Lord. So when I was 21, I was living in a formation house. It was my first year of, of attempting to follow this desire to be a priest. And towards the end of, of that first year, I got sick. But before I realized that I was getting sick, I had come down with chickenpox. And as an adult, uh, it's not a terribly pleasant experience as being covered head to toe with sores and having to be in isolation. But I didn't realize that for the few days before the symptoms actually appear, one of the first symptoms that you receive when you are actually infectious is that you can feel this intense sense of depression and confusion and isolation. And I remember in those days, you know, we, were, we would have mass every day and we would gather for the office every day and we would have a couple of hours of personal prayer in community every day. But when I would go and sit in the chapel and stare at the tabernacle, there was just this vast emptiness. I just couldn't believe in God or in anything else. You know, so I was looking at the tabernacle, looking at something that until then had given me such joy and such hope and, and such desire. All there was was just darkness, blackness, just this emptiness. And it was a most overwhelming experience for coming from a place where belief came quite easily, quite readily, to suddenly this situation where there was just nothing. It was just empty. And I, I, I just couldn't believe it. And I was in the chapel for the hour upon hour, just totally and utterly confused by this experience, by this being so overwhelmed by emptiness and darkness and nothingness. And, and when later on, and you know, when I actually then got sick and, and went to, to see a doctor and asked him about, hey, just before all this kind of happened and you know, I experienced this real depression, he said, oh, yeah, that's one of the, 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 the standard symptoms. And I'm like, okay, well, that at least kind of explains it. But I'm really grateful that I had that. I'm really grateful that I had that opportunity just to experience that complete blackness, that emptiness, because it taps into a situation that I think many people sometimes can experience and feel. That sense that doubt is overwhelming and that doubt is the only thing that seems to explain the fullness of their life. That it's, it's not this whole sense of you know, unicorns and rainbows, the whole of our lives, that everything is just this wonderful, marvelous sense of being able to believe so easily and so readily. That often that experience of, of darkness and, and the inability to actually make that profession of faith is really strong and the only thing that we know. And I think it's one of the interesting parts of our gospel today. We're told that the 11, Judas of course has died, the 11 gather on the mountain and of course in the gospel of Matthew it's on a mountain and they go and he's there suddenly before them. And we're told that most of the community goes up and falls down. They prostrate before Jesus, because they want to offer this act of worship, this act of surrender to God. 
But we're told that Jerusalem doesn't quite capture it by saying, though some hesitated. Others, other translations say, some doubted. Some fell back. Some weren't able to offer their worship because they were so confused. Even though it had been many weeks by now that they'd been meeting with the Lord, that he'd forgiven their sins, he'd encountered them, he'd showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. He'd done all of these mighty works with them. Even so, some doubted. Some fell back. Some weren't sure what they were actually seeing when they saw the risen Lord. The word that's used there is distazo, and it's the same word that we see back in chapter 14, 31, after Peter had walked on the water, and of course he took his eyes off the Lord and he begins to sink. And Jesus says to him, why did you distazo? It's the same word. Why did you doubt? Why weren't you able to continue to believe? And that sense that, you know, sinking into the, the abyss is something that, that seems to kind of happen. But as I was praying with this gospel this week, one of the things that really struck me was that Jesus doesn't then divide the disciples into two groups. He doesn't say, okay, you who are able to fall down and worship me, you come over here and I will commission you now. And those of you who doubted, those of you who had questions, those of you who are confused, you stay over there. No, there's no divisions. There's no distinctions. The whole community, those who worshipped and those who doubted are all gathered together to be commissioned, to be sent out. Sometimes we can feel that, well, I can't share my faith because I have these questions. I have these doubts. I have these things that kind of hold me back and prevent me from actually knowing what it is that I truly believe. But that didn't prevent Jesus commissioning those disciples. It doesn't prevent Jesus commissioning us today. Even when we feel a bit overwhelmed by things, even when we're not quite sure, even when we continue to have these questions, that's never a reason not to actually continue in our friendship with God. The only mistake we can make is just to, to say, well, that's clearly the end of the story and I'll just have to, to walk off into the sunset. The only good thing that happened to me when I was 21 was that I stayed in the chapel. I continued just to be present, even though I couldn't believe, even though I continued to doubt, even though I had all these struggles, even though I had this overwhelming sense of just blackness and darkness and emptiness. The best thing that I did was just to stay put, to continue to be there. Even though I couldn't believe in the existence of God, I stayed there. I remained in that place. And sometimes that's all that we can do when we know this darkness and this doubt. And you know, when we read the diaries and the memoirs of many of the great saints of the church, they've experienced the same darkness, the same doubt, the same confusion, the same concerns. Does that prevent them from being loved by God? No. Does that prevent them from sharing their life and their love, continuing to serve, continuing to be in worship? No. We are commissioned, not because we're worthy, but we're commissioned because he's done it. He's doing this work. And just as he promised to be with us until the end of the age, so he continues to promise to be there. Whether we have these doubts and questions or not, the Lord will continue to be the one that invites all peoples, all nations into this act of surrender, into this act of worship. The only mistake we ever make is not turning up. The only mistake we ever make is, is not remaining in those questions and just surrendering them in love to God. And God will answer them. Maybe not straight away, maybe not in the way that we imagined, but our deepest longings, our deepest desires, God will always provide an answer for. And will usually come when we celebrate next week with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is this breath of new life that is able to blow through us. 
It's when we worship God in the Trinity as we celebrate in two weeks' time that the Lord will continue to open us to these new horizons of love and goodness or when he feeds us with his body and blood in, in three weeks' time. This gift of life and goodness that the Lord is always inviting us into. We can be a, a community of witness. We can be a community that shares the life and goodness of God. And the fact that we doubt, the fact that we sometimes have these questions is no disqualification for this desire to continue in our vulnerability and in our honesty, just to share the life that we have received, the love that we have encountered, and the goodness of the God who continues to invite us into freedom and into truth. And with the Apostles' Creed, we stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The ascension of Jesus draws to a close his earthly life, but opens up the mission of the first disciples to take the gospel to all the nations. May the church, faithful to Jesus, to the Second Vatican Council, and to the actions of Pope Francis, renew its commitment to work with all Christians as we begin this week of prayer for Christian unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> May our hearts rejoice in the ascension of Jesus to his Father's home and strengthen our commitment to the sanctity of all life, from conception through all its stages until death, with special care for the most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the tragedy of wars and natural disasters around the world evoke prayer and action, which will relieve human suffering and restore hope to broken people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we all, at the conclusion of National Volunteers Week, pray with gratitude for all volunteers in our parishes schools and services of care, along with those who volunteers in many organizations across the nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And may those who place their hope in Jesus and have passed through death, follow him into the everlasting joy of heavenly home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, give us your spirit of wisdom and perception so that we can see the hope which you offer to us through the ascension of Jesus, so that we may one day be immersed in his glory, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, 
and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn and share the grace and peace of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Life can be heavy, a burden which at times seems unbearable. It's easy to find ourselves overwhelmed, weighed down, or even crushed. Often these struggles come and go, a nuisance, an annoyance, yet sometimes they grab a hold, gripping every aspect of our lives, pulling us down, consuming our hope. It's hard to breathe under the weight of our anxieties. It's difficult to move forward when we're anchored to our worries. But God loves us too much to let us stay this way. He wants to replace our anxiety with hope, our fear with courage, our worries with peace, and our burdens with freedom. In moments when life begins to weigh you down, 
remember this one simple truth. We serve a faithful God, a God who's offered to carry our burdens and asks us to cast all our cares on Him. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. So, Father, sometimes we do struggle to really believe in you. Sometimes we struggle to, to make sense of our lives and our faith when things around us seem to overwhelm us. In the midst of all of that, you promise simply to be with us. You promise to guide and to govern your church and to call and unite us all the days of our lives. Help us, Lord, to take that step out this week in faith to believe in you, to share that faith, to invite others into this journey. Allow your grace and your spirit to continue to fill us, that we may walk always renewed and refreshed by your life and by your love. And may the Lord be upon you this day, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to announce the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia.